What's up guys? It's Jonathan with One Big Impact. I was waiting for my camera to tell me it's working. Mm, my back hurts. Okay, today's going to be a quick video. Janet just asked some questions about something that's actually a topic that is pretty popular with low carb diets or anything where you're changing what you're doing. So a lot of people will start a low carb regimen and will find out really fast that they get constipated and it's not necessarily because of the um, diet or the way of eating necessarily it could be because whether you haven't been eating good or you're just changing what you're doing your body's like whoa what's going on I'm not really sure what's going on right now so um, in addition to that a lot of people assume that they need to crap five, six, seven times a day. Okay, so maybe you were 250 pounds before and you ate Filiberto's, McDonald's, uh, you know, chicken fried steak and this and that, and you ate five times the amount of food that you were going to eat. Of course you were going to craft five times the amount of what you were going to do, you know, what you were supposed to do. So please keep that in mind. You know, you're eating a quarter of what you were probably eating before and it's good, healthy produce and good quality meats and whole foods and stuff like that so please keep in mind that you've changed your way of eating but you're probably eating a lot less and probably like what you're supposed to be eating um, I will say I'm pretty regular knock on wood um, and I think that is based on a lot of things and I'm gonna give you 10 tips real quick that will probably benefit you on your journey to regularity I wanted to grab something real quick that'll be in this video. I don't have a lot of the things here necessarily, but I you're gonna know what I'm talking about. So the first thing is uh, chia seeds. Now I on I'll be completely honest. I have not personally used chia seeds, but a lot of people have, and they say they work great. Um, the next one is flax seeds, and I used flax seeds. I'm trying to think. Um, Flax seeds actually make me feel extremely non-bloated. Um, remember, check the the labels on the back of these things because um, any of them will be probably high fiber, and that's mainly the reason they work. Um, you can also, and this is a side note, this should be kind of common sense, but not necessarily. Um, and yes, links to everything will be in the description below to purchase on Amazon. Most of these things are extremely cheap. Um, flaxseed is like between two and five bucks for a thing and it lasts you a month. Um, but um, flaxseeds I use pretty regularly and I actually need to probably pick some up just so that I can flush out my system. They say that the more fiber that you intake, the less cancerous your body becomes because you don't have that stagnant waste sitting in there. It goes through your body and grabs all the junk and just kind of flushes it out, which is basically why we're supposed to eat so much fiber. But flax seeds, um, probably with chia seeds as well, I would say go ahead and put them up in a coffee grinder. That's what I do. Put them in a coffee grinder, put them with my morning shake, my morning breakfast. You can pour them on your eggs. It doesn't really matter. They're pretty tasteless. Um, it tastes kind of like fibrous bread or something like that it's just very uh, bland um, but really really helpful I will say that it's really good I would even give yourself a double shot and throw them in your number five coffee um, number five is coffee uh, coffee actually makes me extremely regular if you don't get regular off one cup maybe drink a second cup and just minus the creamer or something like that or minus the uh, sugar you know just get your benefits of regularity through that uh, the third thing is make sure you're getting your vegetables. A lot of people are going to be following this way of eating and not necessarily people make uh, the mistake a lot of the times when going on keto or Atkins that you can literally just eat as much cheese and vegetables or uh, cheese and meat as you want and although that also is not necessarily true it's actually not true at all um, and people will argue with me that's fine but the important thing is that you realize if you're eating loads of cheese, loads of cheese is going to back you up. You ever ate like 10 bananas? 
you're not going to crap for like a week, okay? <laughs> it's the same thing with cheese. You know, and some people are extremely uh, sensitive to this type of thing, including myself. Um, if I eat dairy, I'm lactose intolerant. Let's be honest, everybody likes cheese, even people that are lactose intolerant, including myself. If it screws up my stomach, it doesn't matter. I still enjoy it, you know, and it's important that you limit these things or reduce or change them completely because there's other healthy fats like avocados, olive oil, avocado oil, um, and like ranch dressing and things like that that you can incorporate into your meal plan that aren't cheese or that aren't dairy and stuff like that. Um, so although ranch may be dairy, I'm not sure. I think it's like sour cream or something, but like that's if you make it yourself. Check the label. But I promise you, you will be more regular off of a liquid rather than a solid like a cheese versus a ranch or something like that. Number six, or number four, I'm sorry, uh, a probiotic. This is a probiotic. So if you have extreme problems with irregularity, um, this is kind of like a little a pill and it's got digestive enzymes in it. It's got five billion active cultures per capsules. So basically what this is, is it's like beneficial bacteria that goes inside your body and just binds together everything and gets it all out and just kicks it out of your system. Because there, believe it or not, there is good bacteria, live bacteria and stuff like that, like yogurts. They'll always say where the, the good bacteria is and stuff like that. You need that type of thing that's in your body. This is actually really popular. Um, believe it or not, with really significant bodybuilders. A lot of them actually won't eat all the veggies because it's so much food if they're eating 6,000 calories a day. But they'll take like four or five of these. I'm not saying you need four or five. But if they were eating that much food, that's how they make um, their bodies more regular. And yes, there will be a link in the description below. I don't know that um, a lot of people use these probiotics. So uh, the next thing, number six, cardio or physical activity okay so say you are physically active but you really haven't changed up your routine for a while and say you are you know walking five miles a day and you're not going to the bathroom like you should be well it's probably time to start reducing that in jogging because I promise you almost almost Funny enough, almost dangerously, when I was running a lot, um, I had to go to the bathroom and not pee. Okay, so please um, switch up your routine. Maybe add in some extra physical activity. You know, you should not be staying on your same routine in general. General speaking, aside from being regular, you should not stay on your regular routine more than two weeks without pushing it further. Because if you want your body your body adapts it's made to adapt it's made to survive it's made it's so much smarter than our ability to challenge it meaning you need to continuously challenge it change what you're doing um, switch it up and shock your system otherwise it's just like I ah, know I'm cool where I'm at or whatever we they, our bodies are very good at that so please remember that number seven of course drink your damn water and think about it think about a pipe if the pipes clogged right pipes clogged and you throw some water in it it's not going to flush it out meaning the irregularity but it helps lubricate those walls and have you ever had a clogged toilet and the toilets clogged right the toilets clogged and you got whatever mess in there or whatever and you don't have the plunger you don't want to plunge it or whatever but you let it sit for a while and the water soaks in there and everything and it gets and then you flush it randomly one time and then boom magically it goes down water can help like that and water can help you be more regular and I know a lot of people are drinking their water or drinking this I know I know I know I get it but for instance this is my second one today and I'm almost done with it I'm not saying you need two gallons of water a day necessarily. You know, if you're getting your eight to ten glasses of water, let's be completely honest, that's probably sufficient. Um, you know, I like to push for at least seven bottles of water at 16.9 ounces, but you know, you're gonna know. You know, technically you need to be peeing every two hours, three hours, or something like that. If it's every hour, cool. I'm happy with that. You know, make sure you're getting your vitamins and stuff like that. Also, if you're not taking daily vitamins, try that. Now, number eight is going to be quite controversial, and I don't care what you guys think. And 
Meaning, I, I do care what you guys think, but there's going to be other people besides our family. By the way, if you're new here, please check out our family. Our family is Healthy Living for a Healthy Life on Facebook. It's our group. Uh, I don't know if you would consider it a weight loss support group. A lot of us are like low carbers and different things like that. But basically, you can come any any type of healthy living lifestyle is welcome. If you're selling stuff, please don't bother. Um, if you're going to send me messages, please don't bother. Um, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to delete you in about five seconds. Also, if you're coming to that group, answer the questions. We have three qualifying questions. If you don't answer the questions, I just automatically decline you. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Uh, we have 3,500 amazing members, and I have no reason or no time to mess with you if you don't have time to answer three simple questions. Number eight is laxatives. Okay, Probably take a simple stool softener or something like that. And this is like obviously a... And women specifically, I'm talking to you. Do not abuse laxatives. Do not get stuck abusing laxatives. I've had multiple people that I've been in a relationship with. My mom, not I have not been in a relationship with my mom. <laughs> Those are two separate things. Um, but um, I know a lot of people, usually women, that are addicted to or are very dependent upon laxatives do not become dependent on laxatives. It's a very dangerous thing. Um, and you need to make sure that you use them sparingly and only in a very, in case of emergency. Okay, I used them, I used them, I had some issues going on with my bowels and I would use, I used like two a day for, I think it was like a week and then I got off them, but they helped me become a little bit more regular and then I honestly just set aside I started setting aside going to the bathroom and just sitting there and you know kinda of waiting for stuff to happen and pushing and trying to make it happen and, it, and my body started working with me and not against me so laxatives can be a, a, a good option don't abuse them don't get stuck on them because here's what happens you know, I was with somebody one time that was had to take 20, 30 laxatives to take to go to the bathroom. I was with another person that had to take 50. That is not funny. Okay, that is extremely dangerous for your body. Do not become dependent on laxatives. It's not a freaking joke. Okay, it's very dangerous for you. Please, but they can be helpful if you need them on occasion. That's why they're there just like pain medication. It's great if you're in pain. But if you're not in pain, you shouldn't be taking them. Number eight, massage your stomach. Okay, so on your stomach, and I'm not going to give you exactly, obviously. Um, so here's your stomach, and your intestines, you have to remember, are wrapped around, and there's all these worms of a, wor like a wormy intestinal tract or whatever. So I'm not going to show you the exact way necessarily, but I will show you um, some things that work for me. If I push and just kind of roll through and roll through and roll through and kind of just work it around and stuff like that, like I can even feel the stuff in there. And, you know, just, I think I have to pee. <laughs> but there is a specific pushing rolling exercise and you can find the video on YouTube um, it's actually kind of a weird video but it's actually how to get gas out but it works the same way and you just find out which way your intestines work and stuff like that and that could probably be the most easy natural way and you'd be surprised if you lay down on your bed and you massage your stomach and you you might be surprised there's also things like um, you know, sitting in a squatting position and stuff like that. As far as like the, the squatty potty squatting position and stuff like that. Getting yourself primed up for something. That's actually really weird. But you know what I mean. Um, the, number nine. <laughs> number ten is going to be like. <laughs> ah. um, you know what? Let's go straight to number ten. We'll go back to number nine. Number ten. Sugar alcohols. Now this is along the lines of. I guess it wouldn't be as bad as laxatives, but you better be careful. If you sneeze, man, you better not be wearing clothes. Because you could potentially be cleaning up a mess all over the wall. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. But sugar alcohols, like if you can't go, <laughs> 
Also, if you're lactose intolerant, lactose. Um, and obviously, you wouldn't be able to do that um, with this type of thing. But if you're sensitive to sugar alcohols, um, I should not be telling you this, but it works, okay? Um, it's pretty extreme, though. Go eat a box of... You don't probably don't have to eat a box, but a box will do it for sure. A box of Atkin bars or something like that. And don't do this all the time. Don't be like, oh, I couldn't do the bathroom, so I had to go eat a box of Atkin bars three times a day. No. Okay? If you do, video it because it would be hilarious. You'll be like dumb and dumber sitting on the bathroom. No, but seriously, sugar alcohols can be a good way of relieving yourself as well. And I know that's kind of an extreme way. Um, obviously, all ten other, all all the nine other things would probably be a better option. Trust me, it's not very comfortable. But you could mess up and sneeze and crap your pants. Um, <laughs> nine, number nine is a warm Epsom salt bath. No, not that you care, but I can't take a lot of baths because I can't really actually become in contact with um, warm water. Or hot water or anything because my psoriasis gets extremely inflamed um, also alcohol does that to me also dairy and stuff like that so depending on but most of you are going to be fine with a warm bath or something like that usually I think it's like two cups roughly of Epsom salt Epsom salt Epsom salt which is actually also good for the garden um, and lots of things but it's also good for sore muscles so if you're irregular sore achy Take an Epsom salt bath. It can be really good. And they even have, it's a little bit more expensive. I mean, more expensive relative because it's like five bucks versus three bucks or something. Um, they have one that has like a lavender smell or something like that. Walmart is always going to be the cheapest option for that. Um, there are probably going to be some cheap ones on uh, Amazon. Um, I'll, I'll link up all this stuff in the description below, even some Atkins bars and stuff like that. Um, but use these tips and use them carefully. I would start, if I had to start with one, um, you know, like if I had to start, you know, I would first do like chia seeds and incorporating fiber. Um, obviously, well, number one of all things would be veggies. Um, and then I would go to uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, probiotics, uh, cardio, water. Um, massage your stomach and then I would go to maybe like coffee, warm Epsom salt bath, laxatives, sugar alcohols and obviously the two that were last are probably just like a last resort okay um, I don't want to hear about anybody abusing these things um, because the the what happens is you're depleting all of your nutrients and you're probably already slightly depleted because you're drinking so much water and you're not drinking you're not consuming as as much salt as you were on a on a bad diet and stuff like that so please don't flush your system full of all of its nutrients by shoving yourself full of laxatives or sugar alcohols or anything like that use these things as tools and tools are only good if you're all everything else is in balance so I hope this video helps you guys please like share comment and subscribe to our channel thank you guys and have a good evening peace oh hashtag be stronger than your excuses remember to spread love not hate right there bing bing bing